The Boston Celtics right now have the best record in the NBA by a full two games. They are undefeated at home, and they are in some elite, like legendary status when it comes to their offensive and defensive rating. Number two in both, and number one in the net rating, which puts them as one of only five teams to ever do that. Themselves last year, and then four all-time squads. And the Celtics last year were the only team to not win the championship when being top two in defensive rating and offensive rating and first in the net. Now, they are 0-3 in overtime, which is probably their only weakness, but they have the best starting lineup in the league, I feel like, the fifth highest rated overall lineup, but some of those lineups get wacky with, like, the garbage time minutes and stuff. Um, but I could see a big move coming because the bench has not been as good, as you can see here with the stats. It's been solid, but I think it could use one more guy. Uh, Quaita, Nemias Quaita, is that how you say his name? He's come on a little bit better as of late. I probably butchered that. But if they want to make a move at the trade deadline, it could be tough because they have negative $50 million in cap. And some of the guys that I've identified here, it would probably have to be a buyout because legally I don't think you can go get it. Although I would love to see them bring in another wing off the bench that can really score, that has experience like Bojan Bogdanovic or Gordon Hayward. Hayward obviously already been a Boston Celtic before, so bringing him back, I wouldn't hate that at all. Or you can go out and get another guard. Um, Chris Paul, who just fractured his hand, he would also, again, need to be bought out. But and I don't see the Warriors doing that. Maybe they trade him to like the Jazz or somebody, the Jazz buy him out, we'll see. And then Brogdon also will need to be bought out, but I don't know if the Blazers are willing to move on from Brogdon. That's just four candidates that I would like to see back on the Celtics, but I think that they need, you know, another score off that bench. Something else they need to do to score a little bit better is to convince Jason Tatum to stop taking pull-up threes. He is six foot ten. He could be LeBron James if he wanted to, but he thinks he's Steph Curry. 27 points a game, eight and a half rebounds, 47% from the field, 36% from three, and he's taking like 10 or 11 a game. It's crazy. He needs to stop. Stop taking so many contested threes. He makes one, and then he goes right into heat check mode. We got to stop it. But he is 19 years old, so I imagine he will be able to develop and, you know, play a little bit smarter uh, over time. But still a very solid season turned in by Jason Tatum. Not quite as good as last year, though. The Celtics have some elite guard play. Um, Jalen Brown, obviously, really good. Just got a massive extension this summer. They also have Derek White. They also have Drew Holiday. You see Jalen Brown's numbers on the year. 24.5 points, 5.1 rebounds, 3.8 assists. I made the comment in the last Celtics video that, yes, his numbers have gone down, but you know, as expected, they brought in two other guys that averaged 20 a game last year. So obviously, you know, uh, some less touches than last year. 48% from the field, though, is still strong. However, both of your stars shooting under 37% from three is a question mark when it comes to the playoffs. Um, but they do have some of the best guard clamps in the league with Drew Holiday, who averages about 13 points, 6.7 rebounds, and 4.7 assists. But his biggest impact is by far on the defensive side of the ball, where he is just a clamp monster. 46% from the field, 43% from three on six attempts, however, very solid on the offensive side of the ball. Very efficient, very elite role player up in Boston, especially with what he brings on the defensive side of the ball. Steal on a block per game as arguably the best perimeter defender in the NBA. And then Derek White. Celtics fans are adamant that he should be an all-star this year. I'm not sure. Uh, he's kind of just a role player, but you know I can see where the case was made. 17 points a game, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. Best year of his career by far, 49% from the field, 42% from three, 1.2 steals, 1.3 blocks. However, I mean, as the fourth option, I don't know if you can justify that being an all-star. However, like I said, the Celtics are a full two games ahead of anybody else in the NBA. So with that being said, let's take a quick break here. Make sure to like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button. As you can see here, a large majority of the people that watch the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if that's you, let's go ahead and change that. Uh, we're going to try to try to break at least 20k maybe even 30k that's the new year's resolution so help us hit that um by the end of the year although we got like 350 days left now take a look at the bench production because as i mentioned earlier i think they need to make a move to help out the bench a little bit it is well not led but it relies heavily on a 37 year old al horford and luckily for the celtics they haven't been hit by the injury bug yet but i feel like they're an injury away from being in big time trouble Seven and a half points per game, seven rebounds, three assists, 48% shooting from the field, 38% from three for Al Horford. So a really good season given the circumstances, a block a game in 26 minutes as well. Really good year for Al Horford. Peyton Pritchard, 
who definitely started his year a little bit slow, but he has started to pick it up as of late. He's been a nice, you know, backup point guard for them coming in off the bench. 7.4 points, 3.1 rebounds, 3.2 assists on 42% shooting from the field, 37% from three, and he has been taking care of the ball as he's only turned the ball over point six times. And then the big surprise, well, not big surprise, but somewhat of a surprise has been Sam Hauser for them. He's playing about 23 minutes a game, and he's actually their leading scorer off the bench, potentially the best player off the bench. Um, but Al Horford, he, he's still pretty solid, but again, up to 37 years old. You see uh, Hauser's numbers here, 42% from three on six attempts is the big number to take in there. He's one of the best three-point shooters on this team for sure. Great catch-and-shoot guy. Now, will it be a trade or will it be a buyout? I think it's going to be a buyout. Like I said, they need one more shot maker really to make this whole thing go off the bench. Uh, like we said, Queta or Keita, however you say it, has, has really been a nice addition to the bench. He's really stepped in nicely. But I think they need one more wing or you know maybe a two-guard. I guess that is a wing, technically. They can really shoot the ball, can really score the ball, and they will be solid. But he'll also need you know, a little bit of a two-way wing. It'll be tough to find at the deadline because those are obviously the most highly valued position archetypes in the league. As we talked about earlier, the Celtics are the best team in the NBA, two and a half games ahead of the Milwaukee Bucks for second place in the Western Conference. And then, or excuse me, Eastern Conference. I did that with the last Celtics video too. Um, and then you got Philadelphia down there in third, Indiana in fourth, Miami in fifth. Need to make a Miami video, honestly, because they continue to churn out undrafted gems or late first round gems. Uh, now let's take a look at the outlook because not really much to see with the standings for the Celtics other than they're undisputedly the best team in the league. Uh, in about seven minutes, they tip off against the Indiana Pacers and then they play the Indiana Pacers again. So back to back, uh, both of them at Indiana. We'll see, you know, then they got Minnesota, Milwaukee, Houston, Toronto, San Antonio, Denver. Not the hardest stretch in the world, um, but Indiana's a good team. Minnesota's a really good team. Milwaukee's a really good team. Uh, and then Toronto, not great. Neither does San Antonio. But, again, those are both teams, you know, maybe Wimby goes off, you could slip up a little bit. Let me know your thoughts, though, down below. However, I think the Celtics are the best team in the league right now, and it, it's not really close. The Clippers are good. The Clippers are probably number two right now, but the Celtics got to be number one in my power rankings. Uh, if I had power rankings, I don't make power rankings. Maybe I should start doing that. I don't know. It might not give very many views. I'm not exactly an NBA analyst, but the Celtics, I'm liking the way their season's going so far. We just got to get Jason Tatum to stop taking so many hang pulls from three. Uh, that's more of a KD type thing, not really Jason Tatum's thing. Um, but overall, I like the Celtics. Like I said, we'll see if they make a move at the deadline. I think they should, but I don't know if they have the cap room to do it. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button.